Hi guys, my name is Bird and I am your curvy sewist. We are here today for a live sew along. We are doing the perfect tee. Summer is, oops, I dropped one of my pattern pieces. I actually dropped the instructions. So, summer guys is almost upon us and a perfect t-shirt is a wardrobe staple. Today I am doing the perfect tee by Handmade by Carly. She's an independent pattern designer. I love Carly. I've worked with her for a few years on different things. Really love her style and her vibe. Um, her pattern company name is HBK, and I will tell you a little bit more about that later. I will also drop all of the information, including a link to the pattern where you can pick it up for yourself um, in the description after we finish sewing this live. All right, one second. Let me go ahead and get things set up here. Okay, so... With um, this pattern, I love. So a perfect tee is amazing and even better than a perfect tee is an easy sew. And this pattern has literally three pattern pieces. It has the front that is cut on the fold, it has the back that is cut on the fold, and it has the sleeves, short sleeves, pretty much like what I'm wearing right now. Um, really easy to pull together. It is self-lined, which means that you can use the same fabric for the lining piece, which gives it a little bit more structure and I think kind of elevates the t-shirt. And it's always nice to have an elevated t-shirt look, right? So even though it is the perfect tee, depending upon the fabric, good morning, Janine. Good morning and thank you for joining. So in addition to having the perfect tee, an elevated tee is even better. Um, today, what I am using for um, my fabric, and it sounds like my dog is trying to press his way into my sewing studio. He may or may not be able to open the door, so we might have company. So what I am using today is this really beautiful um, print. You don't need a lot of fabric to make this, which is super neat. It's a really beautiful um, it's like an Ankara inspired print and you do want to have a knit. So this is a, I may have to open the door because he is not going to give up and just going to make all that noise. You do want to make sure you have um, knit with a really good recovery. And this is a four way knit. It is, you can't feel it, but it is incredibly soft. Let me open the door and let this, it's either the cat or the dog. There's always something y'all going on over here. It's the cat. Go ahead, Zozo. So it, if it isn't the cat, guys, we always have either a little cat or we got a little dog drama up in here. This is a zoo, but I'm not complain complaining about it. So four-way stretch knit, and I am going to be lining mine with... Um, the same fabric. You can use a power mesh or you can use another fabric if you choose to line it. But I felt that by lining it with the same fabric, um, I know that the stretch, I know that the feel is going to work together. There's not going to be any working against each other between the lining and the actual exterior fabric. All right, so guys, let's get to it because this is something you can do in less than one hour. So this is the front and it's cut on the fold. Now, I cut a size 16. Um, because of the knit and the negative ease generally in a knit fabric, when you're making a knit pattern, you may find that you are comfortable with a smaller size. When I made this the first time, and you can go over to Instagram and take a look at the my first make, I found right here um, along the bust area on the side under the underarm seams that I had a tiny bit of more space than I preferred and I wanted a little a closer fit so I just took in probably about maybe three-eighths of an inch on each side kept trying it out until it felt completely right I like that it is not a snug t-shirt but you can make it as snug as you like you can even upsize it all right so here's the back I mean here's the front cut two identical pieces and the first step for us today is you want your pattern pieces uh, right sides facing. I'm actually going to turn you guys down so you can see my um, sewing machine. 
Um, what I am using, let me turn you down because that's what you came for was the sew along guys. So you want to see what I'm doing with the sewing machine. All right. That's the business that you came for. I'm using my Foff Quilt Ambition sewing machine to do most of the work today. And then I'm going to be using my new baby, which is the Foff, um, Foff, why am I forgetting the name of it? It is the Foff Admire 1000. I did an unboxing and the unboxing I did live right here on YouTube. So you can check that video out, but I'm going to be using a combination of the two um, sewing machines. All right, checking in, make sure I'm not missing any um, comments. Appreciate you guys being here and watching. And I will upload this when I'm done so you can come back, purchase your pattern, come back and do the whole walkthrough with me. It's really, really easy. So the first thing that I wanna do is with right sides facing, I wanna go ahead, pin or clip the neckline. And you're gonna do this for the front piece and also the back piece. Uh, the instructions, so Carly actually recommends that you not use a serger or overlocker for this particular step because you can end up adding bulk in the neckline and we want to try to avoid that bulk in the neckline. I am also, I'm gonna go ahead and, and do the same thing for the back. Put my sleeve over on the table until I'm ready for that. And so the same thing for the back. And fortunately, I, already, I had already cut the fabric out, um, right sides facing, so that makes it super easy to just go ahead and clip. Now, when you, when you do this stitch, because you're using a knit, you have a couple different options. Um, you can do what is called, use what is called the lightning stitch on your sewing machine. Um, you can do a little, a narrow zig zigzag stitch. Um, oops, lost the clip. You can also do something that I don't hear a lot of people recommend, but I found that it works for me, um, is that I use a regular stitch and I just gently stretch the knit as I'm sewing. I recommend you test it on your fabric. If that doesn't work, then use a, um, a lightning stitch. The zigzag stitch is really, really not what is not my go-to. And the seam allowance, she actually uses centimeters and centimeters if I'm my, um, my, my correction, my conversion is correct. She has a one centimeter seam, which is give or take about um, a quarter of an inch to about three eighths of an inch. So that's pretty good. So it's, you can sew pretty much this entire um, T-shirt on your um, serger. Okay, I'm gonna try that little stitch where I'm gonna give it my fabric a little bit of stretch and see how that works. So you want to pull it super hard, and if you find that when you pull it um, that the stitches um, break, then you know, okay, I need to do another one. But you guys saw me. The recovery was really good. Um, I like this. I'm going to continue with this. Again, lightning stitch may be your friend. Lightning stitch is so freaking slow on the sewing machine. It's nerve-wracking. After you do that, you're going, to, you're going to turn it over, and you can see that this is the back but I'm not gonna move on because I am going to understitch the seam to one side. And that understitching is um, an important step. Reason being is when you understitch your seam, it allows the seam to lay flat and it keeps the uh, lining piece from rolling out to the exterior. I am going to use a zigzag stitch for this one. You won't see it. And so I am going to use a zigzag stitch for my understitching. And then the understitching also allows me to kind of press um, not only the seam to one side, but also to um, lay that, that raw edge down. You're not going to really have any fraying with um, a knit, at least not with this knit, but this is still pretty neat. All 
right? So let me bring that up to you. And you can see that I've done the understitching and it really allows the back neck to just lay very nicely. All right, we're gonna do the exact same thing on the front collar, so right here. This fabric, I've gotten a lot of um, compliments on this fabric. I made actually, oops, I wanted to stretch, switch back to my straight stitch. I've gotten a lot of compliments on this fabric. I made actually a long sleeve shirt um, with it, and this was what I had left over, so I figured this would be great. I love it. This is going to be a perfect, um, not really pop, but perfect color as we head into fully into spring and then on to summer. I purchased it from um, a store online and I need to go back. I'm gonna do that and add the link in the description when I upload the video um, to YouTube uh, because I probably will go and buy some more. I do like this. I like the feel of it. I like the recovery. The shirt that I made out of this um, over a year ago, um, I've washed that shirt so many times. I've worn it so many times and it, it is really nice. It's super nice. It looks just as vibrant and beautiful today as it did when I made it for the first time. All right, let me use that zigzag stitch as I go ahead and understitch, pressing with my finger the seam to one side. So this is the front and even before taking it to the iron and board just with that under stitching it looks incredibly great this is the front neckline this is the back neckline all right let me get it organized that's the back neckline i'm going to grab i think one of my fabric labels and before moving on, I think I'm gonna go ahead and sew in my fabric label now before I, I sew everything together. I guess I'll use black on this one. These labels were actually gifted to me. They're custom labels um, from Super Label Store. And I'm not sure if you guys can see that with the light and that sort of thing. Um, but I do really like it. I designed it completely on their site. I didn't even have my own logo, um, making sure you can see that. And then on the other side, I just said handmade and effing amazing. So I like it. I think I'm going to order some more. Um, they were kind enough to gift these to me. And uh, the whole process from customizing the labels to um, having them shipped, I, I'm just in incredibly pleased with the entire process. So I'm just folding the back and I'm gonna put a clip there so I have a general idea where the center is. And then once I find the center, I'm going to place my tag, reach underneath, reach underneath. Cause I'm not gonna sew the tag on through both layers. I'm just gonna sew the tag on through the lining layer. Don't want you to see that stitch. So before I move on, I wanna go ahead and sew that down. I do have green thread in. I don't think it, I usually would switch it out and put in black thread. I'm not gonna do that today. No one's gonna see my label but me. I really should do it because I think it will look really good. So I probably should just grab some black thread very quickly. It's really those little details that matter to me. Let me grab some black thread. And, and does it really, really matter? Um, probably not because no one is going to see that label but myself. 
but it matters to me. I, I have, um, in my sewing journey, one of my goals um, actually starting last year was to, um, let me make sure this is all the way up, was to work toward having the inside of my garments look as good and as great as, still trying to thread my needle using my automatic threader here. But if it isn't at the highest point, it won't thread properly. There you go. As soon as I lifted the needle to the highest point, it was fine. So I want the inside of my garments to look as beautiful as they do on the outside. So I'm taking the time to do just that. Back stitch there. And then all the way over and back stitch. And I could actually sew it completely down, um, you know, kind of in a square. I'm not going to really, will I? Yeah, I'm going to do it. I tell you, I get into the tiniest details. I want it to look good for me. And on it, honestly, the tiniest details is the difference between a garment being handmade and custom made to looking like it's a handmade garment or a homemade garment, I should say, not a handmade. I don't want my garments to look like they were homemade. I want them to look like they were custom, handmade, and that looks great. And perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, well, let's go back to Carly's instructions. I've only made this once. Super easy, but let's see what we need to do. So we've done, um, we've stitched the, the neckline in the front and the back. We've done the understitching. Okay, we've done that piece. So we want to turn the bodice right side out. So this is right side out. And insert the right side out front bodice between the inside layers of the back. Now this little piece of the instruction gets to be a little bit tricky. So uh, basically what we're doing is we're turning the, the front bodice and the right and the back bodice right sides out. And I believe this is where we're gonna sew all the way down, aligning the notches, and we're gonna sew all the way through the four layers. This is the beauty, I think, of this particular shirt. This part comes together easily. When I first did it, I was like, okay, Carly, what are we doing here? And so before I actually do any actual sewing, I'm going to first um, pin it together. So just so I can go through that again so you're able to follow what I just did, is I have the front or the back bodice right sides out, and then I put the, um, the, the other bodice, I laid it over so that the fabric is right facing. So it's right facing, hopefully that makes sense. And then I'm gonna go ahead and line up the sides. It should be four different pieces of fabric that you are lining up here. All right, take your time. Make sure that you're lining up those raw edges. I hear an animal at the door again. I don't know if that's the cat or if that is the dog. They both like to hang out with me. I have some Sherpa fabric that I got from a remnant bin um, at G Street Fabric, which is a store about an hour away from me in Rockville, Maryland, outside of DC. It was a really nice find to find that in a $3.99 bin. It wasn't a lot of it. I might be able to make a vest or something out of it, but I wasn't gonna leave it. I did buy it about Oh, more than a year ago, and I haven't, with my other sewing projects, I haven't um, found the time to get to it. But my cat, y'all, or my daughter's cat, I should say, has certainly found the time to get to it. And so that, that's her place to hang out. 
Um, so before I get to use it, I'm going to have to um, actually do some washing. So I just kind of pinned a little bit of the side here. And the reason being is I want to then, are we doing the sides or, yeah, we're doing this, just the sides because this um, shoulders and the sleeve will come in when I add the third piece. So I just like to, before I actually take um, the item to the sewing machine, I like to make sure that I have them facing properly. And I can tell you that I've pinned this one inside out. So I always like to do that before I take it to the sewing machine, especially with something like this. And I'm going to now go ahead, flip this over because you wanna make sure that the back sides are right sides facing. And I had them mixed up. So let's do that again. I'm gonna pin it again. And once you find the magic and how it's supposed to lay out, um, you won't have to do these little gyrations that I'm doing. I, I'm doing them because I sewed this up. Um, maybe, gosh, has it been like a week and a half ago? And I don't always commit it all to memory. So I like to just do a little bit of double checking um, right now before sewing then that way I don't have to pull out the seam ripper. And that's always a plus. All right, let's get her all lined up here nicely. That doesn't feel proper. I think I have that wrong, I do. All right, and then this one. And my, my knit has a little bit of static going on, so pulling the different pieces um, apart, and I really am trying to make sure that the raw edges are lined up. All right. And before I, I sew down, I'm gonna do that little peekaboo to make sure that once I sew it, that the right sides are right sides and the wrong sides are wrong sides. Okay. Y'all, we did it. Okay, now we are good to go. Come on, this is really sticking together. Come on, let's not stick together. Let me see if I can lay it flat and it'll be easier for me to pin down the side. It is definitely has a little static electricity going on. There we go. There's two layers. Remember, it's four different layers that you are pinning together or clipping together. We're almost there, guys. That little um, time that I took to adjust it to make, you know, take a little peekaboo, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it because this would have been a nightmare to unpick. Knits the worst, guys, when it comes to having to pull out the seam ripper. The worst. Cotton's about the best as far as if you have to pull out stitches. But Knit Man, those stitches really, really adhere. And then if you do it on the serger, even more so. While I'm here, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the other side as well. Lay this side out flat. And what we are doing is pinning from the under um, arm all the way down to the hem of the garment. There are um, some options with HBK's um, pattern, this new pattern release that she has. What I'm doing is the Perfect Tee 
which has um, short sleeves. She has a version that has long sleeves. I'm not sure she's planning to do like a bundle where you can buy the whole thing because I think a bundle would be really nice. Um, and then she also has a version without any sleeves. And I do want to make the one without any sleeves because I live in Maryland and it gets so humid here in the summer months that I'm going to want something that is breathable and also where my arms are out. Some people don't like to, um, you know, they have an issue with showing, that, showing their arms. I do not. Are they completely, are they, you know, am I sculpted? I do work out all the time though. I do. I teach and I do a bunch all the time. Okay, let's go ahead and get this sewn. Now you could do this on the serger. I'm going to go ahead and just do it very quickly here. And I'm going to use the um, the the uh, the stitch that I prefer, which is starting it and then just pulling the knit just slightly, not a lot, guys, just a little bit of stretch as I'm sewing. could be done on your serger. Let's do a little bit of, oops, you're so far down, I don't think you can see. I wanna make sure that you can see the sewing machine. Oh, you can. Okay. All right, let's do a little peekaboo. The test, the test, the test, the test, the test. We are good. Let's do that other seam. We are good. Oops. Sometimes knit at the very beginning of your stitch wants to act a little bit funky. It's okay to start a little bit further down along the seam and then hit it again with the back stitch. That doesn't happen with cotton, but it can happen with some fabric. as I make my way down. You're gonna see why I like this, um, perf why I think this is truly the perfect tea. Um, because there are gonna be no visible seams on um, the outside at the shoulder seam or along the sides, which is really amazing. You know, I'd, usually if you don't do it this way, you use binding, oops, piece of thread. You use binding to do it at the shoulders and at the, um, definitely at the neckline. This is cleaner, okay? so. Hopefully you guys can see that. So this is the neckline. Look how beautiful and clean that is, gorgeous. This is the inside and it is completely gorgeous. Make sure we pull that all the way down. So that's the inside where my label is. And this is the front of it. So we have, um, shoulder seams that we have to do, which we will get to shortly. 
and then we have and we've already done the sides of the garment and so you can see the sides of the garment just how incredibly clean that is i'm going to tell you that i do think the way that this garment comes together minus the understitching that if you chose to do a different fabric on the inside from the outside the way that this comes together it could almost almost be especially if it's sleeveless it could almost be a completely reversible um top not the way we're doing it today but it could be so that's another thing that you could do as a hack all right so i'm really happy with the way um that that has come out let me grab the instructions again to refresh my memory And her instructions are good, lots of pictures and that sort of thing. Oh, I'm supposed to also do that not only at the, so I'm gonna have to turn it back out. Okay, so let's turn it back out. So not only was I, when I had it turned out to do the side scenes, I'm also going to do the shoulder scenes. So let's turn it back out and do that. You guys see the way that this fabric is, I, I need to put it in the dryer with the dryer sheet. Definitely got some static electricity going on here. All right, so just as we did on the shoulder, I mean, on the side seams, you're gonna want to Take your time here. Okay, let me get in there close. Make sure I'm folding the seam, folding that right at the seam, putting it right inside the other. Now, when I did this before, this is the only place where you have to definitely work to make sure that those seams and the raw edges are lined up so that when you sew it, it comes out neatly. I am gonna put a pin in this one. Come on, static electricity. Painting all four raw edges of your shoulder seam. I'm gonna put a clip on this end, another little clip in the middle. While I'm here, I'm going to go over to the other side, starting at that corner. Let me get rid of that extra little thread. Don't want that peeking out. I'm going to start right in that corner. Make sure those seams are lined up. That's the most important part of piecing these pieces together here. Raw edges and that seam. So I'm gonna go back in and make sure, pull it nice and taut, making sure that it's lined up. This one feels a little bit off to me. I'm gonna put a pin in it. I'm gonna come back to it though, because it feels off. It is such a tiny little thing that you may, you know, it's not a big deal. I just want, you know, it's called the perfect tee and I want it as perfect as I can get it. You guys know that I don't let perfect get in the way of pretty darn good. But with this t-shirt, this little corner there, I already know from the last time I did this, you do want to make sure that you get in there and get it clean. Don't wanna put that pin in my mouth. I was actually talking to one of my sewing friends and someone had a pin in their mouth. They took a deep breath and that pin um, not only got stuck, but it got stuck and it was lodged in their lungs. Can you imagine that? I just feel like this one right here, I feel like this one right here might be a little bit off. So if it is, I'll, I'm gonna fight the seam ripper and deal with it. All right, let me remember to take the black thread off because I forgot to do that last time and put the right color thread that matches the exterior of my fabric. But can you imagine that, guys? 
putting one of these sewing pins in your mouth because it's convenient to do. And then you happen to take a big breath and that um, pin becomes lodged in your, your, your um, lungs. I, and, and the pin is there. I mean, I understand that they cannot remove the pin. That's a big deal. All right, come on now, Needle. Stay where you need to be so I can thread you. Ah, I'm gonna just do this. All right. All right, she is giving me a hard way to go. Mm. As soon as I pulled it away, it pulled out. All right, guys, one more time, and then I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. There we go. Okay. Can be a little temperamental. All righty, guys. I'm going to start this from the outside and make my way in because we know that sometimes when, the, when you first start sewing the knit, it can act a little bit. It can get a little bit stuck there, so I don't want that to happen where I know that I want that seam to be really good in that corner there. So we're gonna start on the outside. When I say outside, I mean near the, sh the sleeve. Okay. Let me make sure, yep. machine is stuck. All right, so the thing that I love about my cloth is, and I gotta now jerry rig this thing to even find the thread to get it out. The thing I love about my cloth, and she is not, she is really in there. Okay. I keep saying the thing I love about my cloth is if she gets stuck, She is going to basically let me know and she is going to stop. She won't burn out because she's going to say burn. Nope, you got to clear that little jam out. There is a little trick, by the way, which I forgot to share with you guys. There is a little trick to um, sewing with um, material like this that likes to get caught up that your machine sometimes like to eat. And it is, you can put um, a piece of um, like the tearaway, um, um, tearaway, what am I trying to think? Interfacing, or you can use like tissue paper. All right. I can't even, this one is really, really stuck here. I'm always giving you guys. This is really stuck. I don't think I've ever had my machine this bad off where the thread was really that far down in it. So let's do a little bit of diagnost diagnostic work. Get in there and with my little snippers. Yes, look at that thread. I mean, that, um, I mean, my, that, um, Fabric is really sucked in there. All right, let's see what we can do. I can't even take my presser foot off, so I'm going to cut a little bit of the fabric. Being careful as I get in there. Come on. Taking a good look around. And I'm going in and I'm just cutting away some threads. I don't think my machine has ever gotten this um, jammed up. My baby ate the, the, um, 
fabric. I think I'm going to be able to salvage it, but she ate it. There we go. Now I can get my needle up. So you didn't even know you were coming today for a whole diagnostic, right? <laughs> well, here we are. Oh, let me cut that thread. Use my little air slippers. Okay. There we go. Woo, y'all, look at that. She ate the corner, but it's okay. We can work it out. So let me go ahead and open up my baby. Look at that. A mess. All right. Let me take my presser foot off and grab some tweezers. This is when you want to make sure that there are no loose threads in there. Okay. And I don't do anything further than what I can see. It looks pretty good. She, the machine definitely got hungry that time and decided we are going to totally eat your fabric. All right, let's put the bobbin holder back in. It's easy because it basically only goes in one way. You wanna check when you have it off to make sure that um, you don't have any um, thread or anything on this plate. Get the thread out of the way. Take your time, she's back in. I'm gonna go ahead and put the screws back in. And the other one as well. I really appreciate that when I bought this uh, sewing machine from, it's a place called Sewing Place up in um, Westminster, Maryland is the, the owner, when you buy a sewing machine from them, they're a FOF dealer. Um, for two years, they do all cleaning, maintenance, no charge to you whatsoever. Um, and they also provide, um, I think it is a couple hours of one-on-one -on -one instruction on how to use your machine. So I am grateful because I would have brought the machine home, had a problem like this, and had no idea how to fix it. And so when I was with her, I only had one, um, needed only one hour with her because it was pretty much easy to, to do, to work with. Um, but she, she definitely made sure that I knew how to take the plate out, how to clean it, what to do and not to do. So I'm grateful. Now, before I actually sew with my material, I'm looking for a piece of scrap fabric. So before I put my fabric through that again, let's grab a piece of scrap fabric. And perfect. She looks good. We're back in business. Okay. And what happened with the edge of the garment is really not too bad that I think I'm gonna be fine because all right, who's trying to get in the door now? <laughs> and y'all, the cat is back. Her name is Zoe. You will probably get to meet her because she will likely jump up on the um, table. All right, so I'm not gonna start at the beginning because we already know that that this fabric likes to kind of jump, you know, the, the machine wants to eat it. So I'm gonna start midway through and go all the way down to the end. Now I'm taking my time here to go all the way down. And because I know the way my machine behaves with this, now I'm gonna turn it back over and stitch in the opposite direction. And that did the trick. All right. Now, I already learned my lesson that this machine wants to eat the fabric and it's four different layers. So it's enough when it's two layers and it wants to eat it. So we're not gonna do that again. We're just gonna start 
kind of midway and then make our way all the way down. Giving it a little bit of a stretch because I'm working with a knit. Oh, I forgot to tell you, there is one other thing that you can do when you are sewing with knit fabrics is you can use um, stretch thread. Wawak actually sells um, a pretty decent, I don't think they have all colors, but they definitely have a pretty decent selection of the stretch thread. And I've used it, um, I think I have black only, and I've used it and I, I do indeed love it. Okay, so we have done that. I'm gonna take a little peek and see how that looks. All right, so we have the shoulders, that looks really good. Let me take a little peek on the other side. And that's a little bit wonky there. So that's what happened last time. And let me see what I can do to try to clean that up. It did that last time. That's the only thing that with this particular um, pattern, when it comes to pulling it together in that little corner, it gets to be a little bit off. You have to really make sure that those seams are completely lined up. And I may actually do this off camera because I don't want to keep you guys while I, you know, pulling threads out when you are working with knits is not fun. So I may actually do that a little bit later on. So no worries there. Yeah, because I can feel right here that this seam is, should be all the way up. You can't see, but I can feel the seam here should be all the way up against the other seam. I said I wasn't going to do it, but I am going to try to do it. Should be all the way up. They should be totally touching and they are not... Remember I told you guys how difficult it is to pull um, knits apart. You want to be careful that you don't cut the actual fibers of your fabric versus just the thread. So I'm just taking my time trying to get in there to loosen it up a little bit. She is tight, y'all. She, This is definitely in there tight. That's super great, except when you need to pull it apart. It's coming, though. I'm getting some of it. It's coming. So I don't let um, Pretty Darn Good get in the way. I mean, perfect get in the way of pretty darn good. But to me, this is, um, this is this is a necessary fix. It's necessary and it's a fairly easy fix, except that you have to use your seam ripper to get in there. That's the only part that's not so easy. And if you're sewing this and you feel a little bit uncomfortable when it comes to this particular part, um, you can always do a, um, a basting stitch. You can do just, you know, a basting stitch, um, which, you know, you, you, re you lengthen, you increase the length of your stitch. So from a normal 2.5 down to a 5 or up to a 5, not down. Okay. All right. I got in there. And this time, I'm going to make sure that those seams are completely touching. Completely touching. All right, I am actually going to do a basting stitch this time. I'm not going to stretch it because stretching is going to make the stitch um, a little bit harder to pull apart as well. A little bit of a, this still isn't, it's not all the way over the way that it needs to be. Look at me still putting that pin in my mouth. I don't want to do that. I want to get out of the habit of doing that. It's not good for your health. So 
So I think I will um, suggest to Carly that this is the only, only, only part of sewing that little tiny area near, you know, where this seam comes together that it gets to be um, a little bit more difficult. All right, let's check that out. It's still a little bit off and as much as I've tried to pull it in as, as possible, let me see how, I don't like that. I do not like that at all. So I'm gonna pull that out again and give it one more try. And this time it's really easy for it to come out because it's just a basting stitch. Hi, Victoria. Hi, Florine. My serger is working really well. I like the serger a lot. I'm looking at the comments on my other computer. I like the serger a lot. It's 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 great. It's fabulous. I'm actually going to try it, you know, give you guys a little bit of um, um, a visual of it and try it here and maybe do one of the side seams or something. The pattern that I'm working on today is called the Perfect Tee, and it's an independent pattern designer um, handmade by Carly, Carly Kenyon, who created this. And um, I think our pattern name is HBK. So that's the one that I'm working on. This is actually, um, what this machine has is an integrative kind of walking foot. So that should have taken care of it. Um, I don't usually have this problem in this little area, um, but definitely I do here with, with this particular t-shirt. I'm wondering when I talk to Carly, I'm gonna ask her if any of the other um, pattern testers, because I tested this pattern for her, if any of the other pattern testers had any issue with this little corner. Because I don't know if there's any other option to get in here to do this, um, but you know, you're pulling together four different layers of fabric and trying to line them all up, it gets to be a little bit much. Let's try it again. All right, so I'm gonna give it another try. All right, that is better. It is not um, perfect. We are going to move on. I am going to come back and fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. I may actually pull those pieces together um, using um, a hand stitch. All right, so before I move on, I am going to shift over and move my off closer and I just want to give you a little bit of a demonstration as I use my Foff, the brand new one, the Admire 1000 Overlocker. I'm going to go ahead and line up my fabric. Slide the fabric under. I like it so much guys. Let me change this again. I just definitely want you to see what's happening with the overlocker. Sorry, as I shift a little bit. All right. I'm gonna shift this a little bit. going through four layers of fabric, which is a lot. Let's see how baby girl handles it. Okay.
y'all. That is my Foth Admire Overlocker. Looks good. All right, let's get back to business on this perfect tee. Let's get back to business on the perfect tee. Okay, let's turn her out. All right, so turn the t-shirt out. I'm going to press it once we are done. All right. We have a t-shirt. Now we need to grab our sleeves. Let me pull Carly's instructions again to see, remind myself about putting in the sleeves. Oh, I need to also trim that little corner, which I will go up and do. So we're gonna fold the sleeves right side facing. You can use zigzag stitch, a lightning stitch, whichever you prefer. Okay. Right sides facing. I am going to just give it a little bit of a pull. See, the machine handled two layers of fabric without eating it up at all. I just think it's a lot. And remember, you can use uh, tissue paper to help you when you get to that particular point. All right, sounds like it decided I started from the end again. Let's not do that burr. Okay, there we go. turn it over so I can get that part that I skipped. Now what you can do at this particular point is simply turn your garment, your sleeves, um, right, wrong sides facing, and just go ahead and stitch a little bit of a hem. Um, I am not going to do the hem here because, well, actually I can. I usually try to, um, I usually like to do an overlocker on the edge, but this garment, we're not going to have any fraying. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of turn the garment a little bit in. Now you can measure this. I've actually done this already with another um, garment and I just know that the, about this length of a hem works for me. The instructions actually tell you um, the length that they recommend for the hem. Um, I wanted to just show this to you on camera because the hemming comes at the very end, the hemming of the sleeve as well. I like to do the hemming of the sleeve before I attach the sleeve because I'm working with less fabric. I'm gonna press the side seam, I mean the underarm seam flat. Just kind of make sure that they're both about the way that I would want them looking good. There are, are tools that you can use. I have a, a little measuring. I'll actually show it to you. This is a really good tool for you to use to make sure that your um, hems are even all the way around. Good. 
sometimes I can eyeball it, y'all, and it just, it just, it just gets to be, it just comes together. Okay. And I always like to start um, the, um, when I'm hemming a garment on the underarm seam or the inner thigh, inner part of a, those clips are getting on my nerves, um, on the inner part of a leg where you really don't see the, be the start. Clips usually work perfectly fine, um, but if it's going under this little channel area, um, sometimes it gets to be a little bit too clunky. All right, where's that underarm seam? There you are. There you are. And I'm still going to do that straight stitch and just gently... Um, stretching the fabric as I do that. Again, test this before you do it. It does work perfectly on some fabrics and then other fabrics that thread will pop. But I've already tested this one. Um, the recovery is good and my threads do not pop. Remember, you can use the lightning stitch or you can use a small zigzag stitch. side out. I already know that the clips are not going to go under there nicely, so I'm going to go ahead and switch out the clips and put in some pins. I have some really good stuff coming your way, guys. On TikTok, um, on Sunday, I sewed live a toiletry bag. I would actually show it to you, but I've already put it in my room because I'm going on a trip and I have it over with the other things that I'm planning to pack. But it came together really nice. It's a free pattern. And when I sewed it on TikTok, TikTok, I don't, you know, you don't save any of the videos. So if someone wants to sew it later, they can't refer back to the video, which is why I like YouTube better. All right, we have a hem. I will press that a little bit later on. Looks great. Let me scoot you over for a minute. Um, but what I was gonna say is that I am going to um, do a sew along. Actually, I already taped the sew along and um, I will be airing that shortly. It is a fun little um, bag to make. All right, look how good that looks. All right, so I've turned the garment right side out and I thought there were notches on the sleeve. There is. Did you not cut your notch bird? Looks like I did not transfer my notch over. So I'm gonna take a quick look at my pattern piece to see where the notch goes. It's on this side. And that single notch denotes the um, the front. So I know how to line that up. Let's not get them confused. This is the front. It is perfect. So I have the garment. It, it looks, it doesn't, it's not easy to see because um, the interior and the exterior are the same side, but just trust me, this is the outside of the garment. You can see because I have that the zigzag stitch there, and I'm going to slip the sleeve into the inside so that the right sides are facing. Facing. Take your time and line up that center, the underarm seam. There's my notch for um, the front of the of the garment, making sure that raw edges are all aligned. Try not to stretch your fabric as you pin it all the way around. There is a center point as well. That center point lines up with the shoulder seam.
Oh, I'm looking at the comments here. Oh, thank you, Victoria. Um, what I do with my in in my sewing space is um, between projects. Well, after I get off off of a live, if you were here, you would see it looks a mess because I throw the pattern pieces on the floor. If I have any extra scraps or anything like that, they just get thrown on the floor. If I'm using tools, I just shift them off to the side. But when I come off of a live, um, I am that person that I am going to take the time and put my tools back where they need to be. I'm going to put my thread back. Um, that's just who I am. And honestly, I think I'm that way. You know, I'm not like that with everything, but yeah, maybe I am. I like to put stuff where they belong. It's easier the next time. Um, I don't always vacuum between projects. It might be between several projects. This wasn't a messy project to cut, so I don't really need to vacuum afterwards, um, but I like to vacuum and just kind of put things where they are, and it gives me like a little bit of a fresh start. Um, I have this deep breath, you know, kind of it just feels like, ah, like a sigh. And, you know, then I just feel good about moving into my next project. There's that little notch denoting the um, shoulder seam. Adjust the pin so that the fabric lays completely flat. And that the raw edges are aligned. I'm going to go ahead and take the time now and do the exact same thing on the other sleeve. Right sides facing, place the sleeve on the inside of the garment. Go ahead and line up your side seams. Place a pin there. Looking at the comments. Thank you so much, Janine. Um, not sure if you were on when I shared earlier that um, I purchased this fabric online and it's, it's been a while and I don't remember the name of the company, but when I post this live, I'll take the time to go through my email to see if I can find, um, like if I can remember the company because I would have gotten like a receipt from my order um, and I'll post it. Uh, my experience with the company, if I remember correctly, was a good experience. Um, I think the quality of the fabric is really good. Um, you know, I've washed, I made a, a, I've made other things out of this type of fabric. Um, and I've washed and I've worn them many times. They're as bright and vibrant, um, that, you know, no fraying, um, none of those little fuzz balls. It's just good stuff. Um, it wasn't really expensive. I don't remember what I paid for the fabric, but I don't remember the fabric being super expensive. So I'll try to remember to drop that. Oh, Victoria, that would be amazing. So Victoria, are you on, um, I think you are on Instagram because I can't get a private message that I'm aware of on YouTube. But if you are on um Instagram, if you would just send me a direct message and maybe we can plan out um, doing a, a nice little pattern together. And it'll be fun to go live and we can chit chat together. And then you guys won't just hear my voice, you get to hear Victoria's voice. And you do have to have um, a certain number of subscribers to go live on YouTube, um, but I have um, the, the number of subscribers that are needed, so you would be good. You would be fine coming on live with me. All right, so I'm going to take advantage of this little area that I can slide the sleeve in, and I'm going to start right at the underarm seam. Give it a little bit of a stretch as I did. Making sure I pull out those pins. We've already had enough 
little shenanigans with the sewing machine and the fabric being eaten up by the machine. I don't want to now break a needle. I, I think it's kind of good in some ways that you guys see what actually happens when you're sewing. You know, when I when I post a, a sew along and you see the end result and um, I show you all the good stuff, I don't show you the hard parts. You know, I think there's, there's certainly value in that, but it helps to actually see the inner workings and that it's okay, yes, it's rare that you have a project that you don't have to pull out the seam ripper. I think it's nice to show those things. I kind of appreciate that. And I am a new sewist. I've only been at this for about three years now. And I wanna be able to show the people that you can do this. If this is something that you are interested in, you can absolutely do it. All right, making sure everything is lined up and flat. All right. One is in. And that looks really good. Looks really good. That's super pretty. And the sleeve is already hemmed because I hemmed it previously. Let's go ahead and slide this in and begin to do, this is the last piece, guys. I'm not even gonna hem it here. I'm just, you know, the hemming is easy. You don't need to, me to show you how to do that part. So you can do that off screen. Um, when you purchase the pattern, Carly actually provides, um, Carly actually provides two or three different options for you to hem your garment. You can hem the garment by just turning it up and sewing it. You can hem it with a cover, cover stitch. Um, you can even take the time if you want and turn both of the, um, the, the exterior and the lining seam together and then stitch it that way. Um, so there are a couple different things that you can do. There's probably even a way that you can do it where um, the hem isn't even visible. Maybe just a little piece where you turn it out. I'm probably going to use my cover stitch. Take the time and change the colors on my cover stitch so that it matches nicely with my perfect tee. All right, so Victoria, send me, go ahead and send me a, a direct message over on um, Instagram and let me know what you're thinking. And um, if you have a particular pattern in mind, let me know um, and we can work on something together. I think that would be fun. Thank you for even offering that. I love that. I love that. If you're watching and you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That subscribe button is right on the screen underneath of the where the video is. Please subscribe. Please share with other people, your family. Help me get the word out. There are a lot of other videos that I've posted about a couple other things, all sewing related content. And would love to have you watch those, like those, share those as well. Save them. Y'all, we have a perfect tea. Let's turn her. Now, what I'm going to do off screen is I am going to come back. I'm going to clean up all of my raw edges. Um, oh, where did I get that green stuff on my finger? I'm going to clean up all of the raw edges on the seams. I'm going to use my serger to do that. I'm gonna pick apart that little area by the collar until I feel super good. It doesn't stand out, so you don't even really notice it, but I know it. Um, I like the way that the, the label looks on the inside. I think it looks amazing. I love that there are no exposed seams on the outside. Um, it's really amazing. Um, the only thing I have left to do is to actually just 
Um, I'm gonna actually press my garment and do all of that before I, I hem it, but I'm gonna come back and not come back here, but off camera, I am simply just going to, first I'm gonna try it out and check out the length and decide exactly where I want it to hit um, because this t-shirt actually hits, goes all the way down to like your um, upper hip area. So I'll decide on how I want it, if I want it that long or if I wanna shorten it. Um, and then once I decide the length, I'm just going to simply fold it under, under use my cover stitch close to that um, folded raw edge, and I'm going to finish it off and be done with it. So good people, we have done a perfect tea. It is, we've been on for about an hour and 20 minutes. This really will take you um, less than an hour. Of course, I had the, the fun stuff that always happens with me, um, which is I had some jamming in my machine, but we, we worked through that. I showed you how to do that. I also um, did a little bit of work on the FOF machine. I had a little area here that I needed to clean up a couple times. You can't notice it. You really don't notice it, but I know it's there and I'm gonna come back and clean it up. I will be making more of these. Um, I already know that I'm gonna want um, the other pattern that Carly has. Um, where it is sleeveless, which is basically the same shirt, which I probably don't even need the other pattern because I can just make the adjustment here and cut it in and just put probably, um, I'll be able to sew that where you don't have a visible seam and similar to the way that I did the neckline, I would do this, uh, this as well. Um, so that's gonna be one of the things that I wanna do. I also plan to take that pattern with the um with no sleeves basically and i'm going to hack this into a nice fitted dress because i think it would be a perfect hack into a dress so guys this is your perfect tee let me look to see if there are any other comments down on my screen here thank you victoria oh you draft patterns Oh, I love that. I love that. I love that. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hi, Angela. Okay. So guys, again, my name is Bird and I am your Kirby Sois. Thank you for rocking with me the whole time through. Stay posted on Instagram because I have some more giveaways coming up. You know, some folks won an Oliso. One person won an Oliso iron. Another person won um, a uh, $50 gift card to Minerva. Um, which you, you know, depend on but for exclusive fabric and I love their fabric and it's free shipping. So we did a perfect tee and I like it. It is self-lined and it's going to be so gorgeous. I can tell you right now, this is going to be perfect. So this is the perfect tee. Thank you guys so much for joining. Thank you for the likes. Please like, 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 drop comments. I appreciate it. Subscribe. And please check out other sew alongs. I generally do one sew along a week. Sometimes it's more, but generally one sew along a week. And then I'll usually do a pattern review or something else once a week. So you're usually going to get um, two pieces of sewing con content from me every week at a minimum one. Um, but guys, I appreciate you guys. Thank you again so much. My name is Bird, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye for now.